Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? You're good? Amen. Amen. My name's Sheen. I'm one of the pastors here at Every Nation in New York City. Uh, Pastor Kaz is there. I see him. Pastor Nathan was there earlier, and uh, he snuck to church. Man, he didn't tell me he was coming. He snuck in here. He was here this morning uh, uh, worshiping with us. Uh, but it, well, I want to say this. We're, we're going somewhere as a church. Uh, we're not just kind of licking our finger and just, hey, which way is the wind blowing? But we're actually up to something. God is leading us somewhere. And so I thank God for Tammy. She's here. She may already left already. But I thank God for Tammy being here, Pastor Tammy. I knew Tammy when I was a campus missionary at Tennessee State University back in Nashville. And she was a freshman. And so it's amazing to see how far people come even though when they get reached on the college campus, you never know what somebody is going to become. And so she's a great wife, a great mother, and now a great minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I got to see that, uh, that, that transition happen in her life. And her pastor is one of our uh, apostolic leaders. He helps oversee this church, he and Lachelle. And so just wanted to say thank her for coming and being a blessing to this church uh, and blessing this family uh, this weekend uh, with the worship retreat. Now, with that said, I had a week. Anybody ever just had a week? Like, man, what in the world? And so this time, this week, I had a funeral on Tuesday that I had to perform. And then Friday, I had two Bible studies with the New York Jets football team, players and coaches. And then I got in a car and I drove to Philly to speak at our conference in Philly with our sister church in Freedom uh, Church called Philly. Here behind me, you got Pastor Gabe in the middle. He's our pastor there in Philly. He oversees a couple locations there. And uh, also you see Pastor AJ, who's our pastor down in Charlottesville, Virginia. And so we had an opportunity uh, to minister there. I spoke three times yesterday. After we spoke, I got in the car and drove back up here and got here late last night. And so I'm here this morning and I'm ready to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to this great church here at Every Nation New York City. And so with that said, can we stand for the reading of the word of God? In Acts 9, 1 through 19. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing our murderous thoughts against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if they found any there but who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you're persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what to do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but he could not open his eyes for he was blind and had to lead him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, he sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. In verse 18, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Here it is. The Holy Spirit has fallen upon this church or these people. It said about 120 were in the upper room singing psalms and hymns and the spirit of God came in like a mighty rushing wind. And it said that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. 
And as they began to speak in tongues, the power of God was upon them now. And now all of a sudden, Peter in boldness stands up and begins to preach the word of God to these people who had just crucified their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now he's preaching this word and people are getting saved. And it's not just anybody. It's people like Jews and, and Gentiles and, and priests. They're giving their lives to Jesus. And all of a sudden, there's people watching from the outside, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they're not happy. But God had spoken to the disciples and said, it's not just for Jerusalem, but it's for Judea and to the other ends of the earth. You must go. But just like good Christians, we hear something from God, but we stay put. But God has a way of moving us and persecution broke out and his persecution began to break out. A man by the name of Stephen was stoned. And what do I mean by stoning? This is a technique, if you will. If people were uh, not following the ways of God, what they would do is they would take stones and begin to pelt this man or pelt a woman until death. Any baseball people in here today? Anybody love baseball? I love baseball. You ever see these great pitchers where they can take the baseball and they can spin it any old kind of way? They can throw sliders. They can throw curves. They do all these techniques with a baseball. Ever been in a stadium before when a pitcher all of a sudden accidentally lets go of a ball and it gets away from him and he catches somebody in the head? It's like a gasp goes in the room. People are like, oh, my gosh, you know, is he dead? Helmet goes flying off. The person falls on the ground. But, you know, there's somebody that to pick him up. Not in this situation. There's a couple of men throwing these stones at Stephen to the point of death. And one of them was named Saul, Saul of Tarsus. And Saul was zealous about this thing, trying to get the people called the way. The reason at the time they were called the way is because at the time there was no word called Christian. And so Jesus was the way, the truth and the life. And so that's what they took from it. They said, man, they are from the way. And so we need to make sure that these men and women stop spreading this gospel about this Jesus. And so here it is. He goes to the chief priests and he grabs these documents and he says, if I can find any man, any woman who are following Jesus, man, I want to take them and throw them in jail, possibly even murder them. And he gets the authority to do it. And so it is. He's just not just him, but he's going with a mob of men, maybe the chief police, if you will. They're all uh, uh, the chief uh, people that are serving uh, the people there in the, uh, the synagogue. And, and they're following a Saul and they're walking to go get men and women in the synagogue down in Damascus. Now, this is how I know that Saul was for real because it was a week's long journey. And, you know, you got to be serious to walk a week to go get some people that are following the way. But along the way, he meets somebody and his name is Jesus. And Jesus speaks the word to this man and all of a sudden it says that when he spoke to him, just like God has been speaking to us throughout this month, God has been speaking words and people are hearing the voice of God like never before and something supernatural is taking place in the men and the women and the children of this church as God is speaking and it's something called transformation. See, God is speaking, and when he speaks, it's not just to hear himself say something. God wants to transform you, and he wants to transform me. And when he spoke, something supernatural took place. It said that, man, a light shone, and he fell to the ground, and the first words out of his mouth was, Lord. And I need you to get this, that Jesus is Lord. And he's not just any Lord, but he's the Lord of the universe, and if he can take care of the universe, he can take care of you and me. And he's getting ready to take care of business because the one that was going to arrest is now being arrested. And so here it is. He falls on the flat of his face and he's looking around and he doesn't know what to do. And he's uh, flailing around. And, 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 and here it is. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? See, he wasn't persecuting the church. No, he was persecuting Jesus himself. And back then, when, when all of a sudden that someone with authority would come upon you, like a follower of Caesar or a Roman soldier, their salutation was, Lord, Caesar is Lord. But now all of a sudden, he's running into the real Lord, Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says in Philippians 2, 9 and 11, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here it is, he's encountering the true one and only living God. And when Jesus spoke to Saul, he spoke to him twice. Anytime in your Bible when you're reading and he says a name twice, something supernatural is getting ready to take place. God is getting to do something radical in that man or woman's life. So if God is speaking to you, if God is speaking to me multiple times calling our name, we need to listen because something is up. And here it is, God speaks to this man, and all of a sudden, he's blinded, can't see, walking around, lost, and has these people trying to help him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old is gone. The new is here. Transformation. A lot of people think, man, if I get transformed by God, something bad is going to happen. No, God will not just transform you spiritually, but he's going to leave you naturally. There's some things that he's going to leave connected to you. What do I mean by that? Just because we get born again doesn't mean that we're going to lose our character and lose some of our nature. That's called wiring. When you think about Paul, Paul had this background in his life. He was circumcised on the eighth day uh, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of uh, Benjamin. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. Man, this man was had a, a great background of, of knowledge. He was a great philosopher, a great debater. He was connected and he was bold and God was going to use that to go and preach the message of Jesus Christ. Christ to the Gentiles, you and I. And so what do I mean that just because you get transformed by the spirit doesn't mean that your wiring is going to be different. If you look out through scriptures, people like Luke, the doctor who wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts, there's a wiring of him. That's why each story is a little bit different. Even though they were born again men, they also had a, a way of, of writing and it was coming out on paper. That's why when you read the book of Luke, everything is about miracles and, and, and signs and wonders and healing because he's a doctor. But when you read Matthew, you read Matthew, Matthew being a tax collector and Matthew also being Jew. It was also that when you read that, it starts with the lineage of Jesus because he knew the law. He understood the law. And so that's what's coming out in his writing. But he was also very detailed in the accountants in the house today. Very detailed. Can't lose that zero. That's money. And I like to say this, that God likes a big mouth. So if you got a big mouth, watch out because God can use it. <laughs> Paul had a big mouth, didn't he? Saul had a big mouth going around saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that to this person and that person. I can't wait to do that. And God's looking down and saying, I can use that. I can use that for my kingdom. I can use that to advance some things. And so if you got a big mouth, watch out because God can use it. I too had a big mouth at one time. I was the one that would stand up and tell everybody, let's go here and let's do this and let's do that and leading people astray. And God's like, oh, yeah, I can use that. Instead of leading people astray, you're going to lead them to my way. God loves a big mouth. And so here it is. He's using this man. He said, look, he's going to be used by me to do some great things and going to be used by God to do some extraordinary things. And, and God is setting him up to, uh, to be a blessing and to be a, a person of, of influence. And I'll get to that in a minute. But here it is. Transformation. Transformation. The persecutor now becomes the proclaimer of Jesus Christ. The one who is coming to persecute Jesus is now the proclaimer of Jesus. It's powerful how God will take you and transform you and use you from some extraordinary things, some powerful things. Second thing I want to say is that God uses others. And so here it is, Ananias minding his own business. And I want to say this right now, as a church, we better stop praying because if we do not, if we continue to pray, and we continue to call on the Lord. God's getting ready to use you and to use me to do some extraordinary things. And so are you ready? Oh, no, no, no. Are you ready? Because I'm hearing a lot of people, oh, I wish they would change this. And I wish they would change that. And I wish we would go here. And what about those people? And what about this city? And what about this person? And God is looking at you and he's looking at me and saying, I'm going to use you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. See, Ananias was a part 
of this people of Jesus Christ. And I'm pretty sure he was up there. Oh, yeah, I'll go to the nations. I'll go to Samaria. I'll go to Judah. I'll go to Jerusalem. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Just like we were singing. Oh, Lord, it's all about you and you can use me and I will go wherever. And all of a sudden he speaks. Oh, yeah, God speaks. And so here we are crying out to God, oh, Lord, give me this and give me that. And all of a sudden, God shows up. And here it is. He's showing up right now with Ananias. And Ananias is saying this. God speaks and says, I need you to go reach Saul. He says, but Lord, but Lord said, go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings and to all the people of Israel. And I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. But you know what? He had the, the sense of the, 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 the I, I, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared because he knew what Saul was doing. He knew that Saul was going around reaching people. He knew that Saul was going around tormenting people and not just anybody, but the, his people, him right there. And he's like, man, I, I don't know if I want to do that. See, what's the problem with us is, is we'll cry out to God. Oh, Lord, do this and do that. And when the time comes, we chicken out. And so what happens is this, we got to not be afraid of, uh, of the, the persecutor, but we got to become the proclaimer. And so what God is dealing with this man, Ananias, he's God is saying this about Ananias. He's saying, look, I'm going to transform you and use you and you're going from a transformation and stop being a procrastinator. So, so many times we procrastinate. Well, you know, God, uh, this, that, and the other. And, well, you know, I got this going on, and I'm afraid about this, and I'm afraid about that. But if God is speaking, we got to move. And the question is, is will you be ready? Will you and I be ready when God moves? See, a lot of y'all out there crying out, oh, God, give me this business. Oh, Lord, do this. But you ain't writing down the plan. You ain't sitting there thinking about what God is speaking and saying. Oh, God, I want to marry this person and marry that person. But you ain't getting yourself together. You over there doing bad. You over there uh, got nothing in your pocket. Ain't got no job. You better get yourself right if you're going to have somebody. <laughs> Preaching to somebody today. Are you ready? Oh, church, we want to, oh, I feel like the Lord is speaking for us to be outward. Oh, let's go outward. But when God puts his finger on a city, when he puts his finger on a campus, when he puts his finger on a nation, will Elsa and will Pastor Kaz and myself and this great team of leaders, will we be ready? Will the church be ready? Oh, God, we, we want to be used, but we like to procrastinate. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. It says, be prepared, yeah. be prepared. And so when I got the call last week to come and preach in Philly, you better be ready. I was prepared. I was ready to go. It was like, man, well, what, what time you want me down there? I got something to say. I'm not sitting around waiting and just, well, you know, I got to think about it. Let me, oh, well, the Lord, what are you speaking? No, this is what we've been praying for. We've been believing for this East Coast corridor. We've been asking God, use New York City to be a speaking uh, authority into the nations, into the cities, into the campuses of this part of the region. And so here it comes when the door opens, will we be ready? Yeah. Yeah. See, this church it's not just a church that wants to sit here in Midtown on 60th Street and hang on by the foot of the cross. No, as a church, we want to get out and do something. We want to make a difference. We want to raise up the next apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher, and missionary. We want to get in the game of life. We're not up here just trying to equip you for nothing. No, the Bible says to equip you for the work of the ministry. And so if some of y'all want to minister, then you need to hear what the Lord is saying and stop procrastinating. Don't you shout me down because I'm preaching good today. <laughs> I love the amplified version. It says, preach the word as official messenger. Be ready when the time is right. And even when it is not, keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. 
Correct those in error of doctrine and behavior. Warn those who are in sin. Exhort those and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity. And be patient and faithful in teaching. And so here it is. God is speaking to Ananias. Man, you've been praying. You've been crying out. You've been asking God to be used. And here he is, Saul. Oh, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. Oh, I didn't know he was going to look like that or she was going to look like that or, or be from that group of people that I was taught to not like. Oh, yeah, God going to use you however he wants to use you. So when you pray, you need to be ready. Be ready. And so I've known this over the years as God guides, he will provide and he'll provide three ways. He'll provide peace. He'll provide provision and he'll provide protection. Ananias needed to know that God was going to be with him as he sent him to go and minister to Saul. God is with us. God is never going to call you to a thing and not give you the strength to do the thing. He's going to give you everything you need. And so it's so important for us to understand that. And you're saying, oh, pastor, how do you know about this? Uh, you, you know, you just up there behind the pulpit hanging out. There was a time when God spoke to me. And I had to step into some things. Anybody got a past around here? Come on, let's talk about it. Anybody got a past? You know, I'm talking, some of y'all got skeletons, others got cemeteries. Y'all know y'all got some stuff going on in your life. And so I remember, man, we were planting this church in New York. Right after 9-11, everybody's trying to scratch their head. Who do we know in New York? I know this person, that person. And, you know, who can we get to the Lambs Theater, which we met at? And we're just trying to figure it out. And, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor now. And so I got to put my head to, uh, and start thinking, you know, who do I know? And all y'all played with some guys in the NFL. They're up there with the Giants and the Jets. Maybe I can reach out to them. And I heard God say this. Call Greg. I'm like, Greg, oh, no. Oh, Greg. Oh, yeah, Greg. You, oh, Greg. Well, 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 God, you know, if I call Greg, you know, Greg knew me back then. He was my coach back then when I was in college. So Greg don't know the same Shino. He know the old Shino. And you want me to call him? And so I picked up the phone and I'm thinking, oh, man, Whew, this is going to go bad. But I'm going to call him anyway because my Lord said so. Please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Hello, Coach Shino. What's up? Well, um, Coach, I'm calling. You know, we're planting a church in New York, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but your boy, <laughs> he done got right with Jesus. <laughs> I'm a pastor now. And all of a sudden, he got quiet. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, here we go. And he said this, well, I don't know if you knew, but I gave my life to Jesus a couple years ago, too. He said, what are you trying to do? And I said, man, we got these athletes that are going to be coming in, sharing their testimonies at the Lambs Theater. Would you be willing to send some of your football players over to hear him speak? He says, absolutely. Send me the flyers. I'll put them in their lockers, and we'll see who comes over. And so I remember being there that night. We flew up, and I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, you know, waiting, and the guys are sharing their testimonies, and they give a call to faith. And all of a sudden, a couple guys come down to look like ballers, and I walk up, hey, man, you know, I saw you give your, you know, raise your hand, and you may you prayed this prayer. And he's like, yeah, 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 I, I go to Rutgers, man. My, my coach sent me over here. I was like, wow, Greg. That was my coach. He's your coach, man. And all of a sudden, you know, we begin to talk a little bit. And I said, man, it, it's not going to stop here. And so I flew the kid down to our home in Nashville. And, 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 and he went to a conference there. And we baptized him. And then I flew back with him. And we met in our hotel that I was staying with as we were planting this church. And I remember laying hands on him and praying for him. And God filled him with the spirit. And to this day, to this day, this man and this, his wife, who got reached at Rutgers University, they started one of the largest Bible studies in the history of that school where athletes were getting born again left and right from all over the campus. To this day, they're in our church in New Jersey as elders. When God speaks, we have to be ready to go. When God speaks, we have to be ready to do what he's saying. And I've heard it said this. There's three things that when I'm hearing from the Lord, it says this is now, not now. Or too late. So if God is speaking, 
My posture is, is it now? Is it not now? Or am I too late? Because you and I can be too late when it's time to move. Anybody got parents in here that used to just kind of be like, hey, we leaving at this time. Six o'clock. I had a mama like that. We leaving at six o'clock. But what my mom would do is she'd get off work at five and crash out on the couch. So I'm like, there ain't no way we leaving at six, man. She's snoring loud. She tired. She ain't getting up. And so what I do, go in my room and play with Legos and I'm messing around my G.I. Joe figures and I'm cutting up and I stick my head every 10 minutes. And is mama up? Nah, she ain't up. Let me go here. I ain't getting dressed like she told me to, to be ready at six. And I'm playing around and, you know, doing my thing and cut little cartoons on and laugh a little bit. And all of a sudden, six o'clock hit and I stick my head around and she's in the car. And not only in the car, but she's like pulling that thing and, and putting it in drive and she's moving. And I'm like, wait, mama, wait. And you know what? That's just like us with God. We sit up around and we, you know, he, he spoke a word and said, I need you to be ready to go. And you sitting around. Well, he ain't ready. You know, I'm just going to go over here and mess around, you know, fool around over here in the nightclub and mess around over here with this girl or that guy. And, you know, I'm going to mess around over here. And all of a sudden it's time to move and you yeah. too late. Yeah. You didn't miss God. But after God then spoke and said to be ready, see, God spoke to Ananias. Look, I got a man by the name of, of, of Saul of Tarsus, and he's going to be on a road called straight. And what does that mean is that in Damascus, the roads were windy. And so God, when he speaks, he's going to be specific because there was only one road in the city that was straight. And that's where Saul was going to be. God ain't going to just speak to any kind of way. He's going to be specific in what he's calling you and what he's calling me to do. He's going to make it so clear that you can't miss it. Are we ready? And so here it is. My third point is he has a plan. And so Saul gets there and he's sitting there and he's blind and Ananias begins to minister to him. And it says that when he began to minister to him, that these scales came off his eyes and all of a sudden he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it said that he was baptized. And all of a sudden he said he got a little strength on him and he spent some time with Ananias and some of the brothers strengthening him, getting him stronger. And the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 8, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways declares the Lord. So these brothers are looking at Saul. Man, you were the persecutor but now you're getting ready to be the one that's the proclaimer and I'm watching you and he's getting stronger in the word of God and it says that he straightway got up and began to preach the word in the synagogue you don't have to wait when transformation takes place you can get in the game right now so stop waiting and saying well I got to get this right and I got to get this right before I start a connect group before I get on my campus and start witnessing before I start doing anything for God I got to get myself together no it said he got it together and straightway got in the synagogue and begin to preach the word. So many people always say, well, you know, I don't have enough theological background. I don't have this. I don't have that. God don't worry about that. He can work with what you got and let him use you to go do extraordinary things in this city. So many people run from the call and the things that God is calling them to be and do. The persecutor became the proclaimer said that he was filled with the spirit. Why was he filled with the spirit? So that he could go around and talk about the, 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 the speaking in tongues and, and you know, the, and let me say something about speaking in tongues. Tongues are not of the devil. Can I say that? I was full of the devil and never spoke in no tongues. All it is is a weapon. All it is is power. And when you look at Saul's life in the Bible, it says that, man, this man did extraordinary things by the right hand of God. It said that, man, so much power was oozing out of him that, man, they could lay handkerchiefs on this man's body, take it off and put it on somebody sick and they would be healed. The power of God. And the one thing in this church is that we are not afraid of is the power of God. That's why I was so excited about our, our, our class that we had on Thursday. Uh, uh, what was the name of that? Anybody? Living in power. I should have been there so I can give me some power. Living in power. Not living as a coward, but empowered to go do some extraordinary things for God. Why? Because God was sending him to places that nobody wanted to go through and he needed this power 
on his life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians about him and what he went through. Paul, it says, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in open sea, and I've been constantly on the move. It's going to take power. Some of y'all are facing some things that you think, man, is going to shut you down. It's going to make you stop. It's going to make you quit. And that's why you need power on your life to keep moving forward. Transformation. This man was transformed from the inside out, man. He's a new creation in Christ. He wasn't worrying about the old. He's the new. And he's trying to go do some things for the Lord. And he began to witness and do some extraordinary things. Let me tell you about what, what Paul did. Paul, made he made three missionary journeys to spread the Christian message to non-Jewish communities in Asia. He did it in uh, Macedonia. He did it in Cyprus and Judea and Syria. The man wrote 14 of the 27 books in the New Testament that we read today. This man was an extraordinary thinker, extraordinary writer, and an extraordinary apostle going and birthing things and starting things in places that nobody wanted to go to. And it all started with transformation. And so the question I have for you and the question I have for me is, will we allow the spirit of God to come upon us and transform our lives to be the men and women of God that we're called to be? But just not transformation for any old thing, transformation to go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's time to be bold. It's time to do the things that God has called us to be and do. The supernatural to step out and do signs and wonders, to step out and pioneer, to step out and do those things that you're called to do. And it doesn't mean the fivefold ministry. I prayed over the businessmen and women of the last service, and I'm going to do the same thing now because some of you in here, God has been speaking to you through this sermon series that it's time to do something. It's time to get in the game. It's time to get involved. It's time to dream again. It's time to step out on the water. It's time to pioneer. It's time to do that thing that you wrote in that little book and you shelved it and said, no, nah, it's too big. It's too hard. And I don't have the time to do it. No, God is speaking and saying, take that off the shelf, put it back on your desk, open it back up and dream again. Dream again. Pioneer. Transform to do extraordinary things. Father, I thank you in these moments right now. God is here. And I thank you in Jesus' name for the supernatural transformation of the power of the word of God. Lord, we desperately need you in this season. God, as people have heard you and they've responded to your word, God, there's been healing. As people have heard you, God, you've opened doors to do supernatural things, God, and getting people with apartments and doing homes and doing jobs and all these things that the world was saying couldn't be done. Lord, you did because they chose to believe. And God, I'm thanking you right now for that supernatural power of God moving over this space right now. If you need healing this morning, I just want you to stand to your feet. If you, you're experiencing some things, I just want you to stand where you are. The Holy Spirit is here to do business with you. Be bold about it. You need healing. God, I thank you right now that you're Christ the healer. That you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who healeth thee. You're the chief physician. I want to thank you, God, for the power of your word and the power of your might. God, we worship you and we praise you. Let's just begin to worship God right where we are right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your presence. Lord, you said we're two or more gathered together in your name. You're there in the midst. God, we thank you that you're right here. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. God, we stand on this promise of Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that by your stripes we're healed. God, we're claiming healing right now. Holy Spirit, come into backs, shoulders and necks. God, I'm asking you right now in Jesus' name that you'd begin to heal hearts. God, as you begin to heal souls, God, Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for your word, and I, Psalms 107, 20, God, you sent forth your word, and you healed them, Lord. Release your word over this body right now. Healing come in the name of Jesus. Healing come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just stretch your arms where you are and just begin to receive. 
God, we receive mental healing right now. You're not crazy. No, no, no. God is giving you a sound mind, a mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I break every lie of the enemy right now that they're not crazy. I break every lie of the enemy that, that, that my grandmother and great-grandmother, they had this disease and now I got it. No, I break that lie in the name of Jesus. We call healing in this place. In the name of Jesus. We declare and decree there will be no sickness or infirmity or disease in this house. We drive out, Lord, heart disease. We drive out thyroid disease. We drive out all this stuff that is plaguing our people in this season. We drive it out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Some of y'all can't sleep. There's a shooting pain running up and down your body. God, I'm asking in Jesus' name that that nerve damage, God, that you would come by your Holy Spirit and you would heal right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm praying right now that you would come and touch people. Touch people right now in Jesus' name. Touch them. Lord, I pray for that broken heart right now, that broken heart. God, I pray heal in the name of Jesus. Healing in that relationship, just bring healing. Remove bitterness and anger and rage, God. Just bring healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are Christ the healer. We receive your power. We receive your word right now. Thank you, Lord. Let's just continue to worship the Lord. Thank you. He is here. Healing. Thank you, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over this house. We plead the blood of Jesus over every man and every woman right now. Healing come. Healing come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for the testimonies of healing. I thank you for the testimonies of miracles right now that they're going to remember this moment in church. God, you drew them here. They didn't come here because of some flyer or something they saw on the website. No, they came here because you drew them and you wanted to bring that healing today. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you praise. We thank you and we bless you. And we thank you for the super power of transformation taking place in this house God we may have came in here one way but we're going to leave another in the name of Jesus and all God's people said amen let's stand to our feet let's give God a hand clap of praise Lord we thank you we give you praise come on somebody praise him like the healing is already taking place praise him like you already got the report that, that, that it is good it is good that I feel good now, that I can sleep now, I can wake now, I can, I can move now. I'm no longer the same now. I'm, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I can, I can move my body, I can move my neck. I can bend down and touch my toes. I can move my arms. I'm healed because Christ said so. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going somewhere, church. We're not just sitting around playing games, but you bring people to this house, and I promise you this, God is going to meet them where they need to be met. God is going to show up and begin to show himself mighty and strong right here in this house. He's already been doing it. We've been documenting it. We've been putting it on paper. We've been getting texts from people as they put their name on the card and people are asking for prayer and we're getting these reports back that God is doing this and God is doing that. Get the word out. God is moving in every nation, New York City, online. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your co-workers. God is showing up at every nation. New York City, it doesn't matter the 930, the 11 o'clock. It doesn't matter if it's 6 p.m. God is showing up at every nation, New York City. God is with us. And I'm excited to participate in what the Lord is doing through this house. Lord, bless your people as we go. And may your face shine upon them. 